seated the bright morning. And the morning star, the prince of peace, the alpha, and the omega. Walking in sunlight. Yeah, yeah. All of my journey. Oh, over the mountain, oh, over, over the mountain. Jesus has said I Well the Lord said I never Lord leave him Oh Lord that's a promise Divine word a promise that never, never can fail oh, oh heavenly heaven Y'all will look like you do oh, Have you ever wondered why People act a certain way As if they just don't like you and they behaved in that way because it almost felt like they wanted you to know I'm behaving like this because I don't like you. Do I have any witnesses in here? And, and it just, you wondered to yourself, man, I have not done anything for that person to dislike me. And you're thinking to yourself, I don't even know this person. <laughs> Amen, somebody. And they don't even know me. So you're saying to yourself, what is it that this person does not like me? Let me give you my brief disclaimer. Here is my brief disclaimer. When I say the people that people don't like you, I am talking about people who have uh, demonstrated that they do not like you and, have, and you have truly done nothing intentional to them. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that treat you as if they don't like you when you know good and full well you have done nothing intentional for them not to like you. I'm talking about people that may, you may not even know who they are, but they still treat you as if they don't like you. Now, the premise of what a lot of people believe is, I want to hear some reasons, Brother Jones, from you this morning why people don't like you let me just tell you something i am going to dispel a myth for you today that's going to bless your life because the premise of that statement why people don't like you can be challenged they are rude sometimes folk don't speak sometimes people have a hostile attitude and you have been nice to them, but they're mean to you. They hug everybody and speak to other people. But when they get to you, you get to have hug. The sideways pat. And you're thinking to yourself, I just saw you embrace and squeeze somebody else. But then when they got to you, it was like, okay, okay. I know we in church. <laughs> So let me, let me give you a half hug, pat situation. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about on this morning? I'm glad I got a church up in here. But when they got to you, the attitude was terrible. Some folk will walk past you and act like they don't see you. And you get all these negative feelings of negative energy toward that person. Does anybody resonate with what I'm talking about on today? And have you ever texted somebody, called somebody, emailed somebody, but they don't respond to hours later or watch this, never? All right, then. All right. But then you see them posting something on Facebook five seconds later when you know they got your message. Am I talking to anybody in here? And it's obvious that they are simply ignoring you. Turn to 1 Samuel 20 and verse number 1. I want to show you something that um, I think that can bless you. If you needed a sermon title this morning, it would simply be the futility of likability. The futility of likability. Something that's futile means that it's just pointless. And everybody that you want to like you will not like you. And there is nothing that you can do about that because some of us have tried to make folk like us and we realize that just doesn't work. Have you ever saw something was wrong with a person or you felt like that there was some tension and you wanted to do everything you could to be nice to that person, but it just did not work. It became a futile exercise. It was pointless. So today we're going to talk about the futility of likability. 
the futility of likability. I want you to know this. This is a, an important time in the history of Israel. The Bible says, and this is when David was on the run. Then David fled to Nioth in Ramah and came and said to Jonathan. Somebody shout Jonathan. Now Jonathan is David's best friend. It just so happens, beloved, that Jonathan, somebody shout Jonathan. Jonathan is also the son of King Saul. At this juncture of the historical document of 1 Samuel, uh, you will find that Saul was trying to kill David. Saul had David on the run. Saul wanted to exterminate and kill David. Tried several times and several different things to kill David. But David's best friend was Saul's son, Jonathan. Now notice what David said. Have you ever said this before? What have I done? Come on church. What is my iniquity? And what is my sin before your father that he is seeking my life? Have you ever raised the question, what have I done to this person? What have I done to this family? What have I done to this church member? What have I done to this person at work? What have I done to this person in the government? What have I done to make them want to seek after me and say all these evil things about me and do harm to me? Do I have a witness in this place this morning? Have you ever raised that question before? What have I done? And you're asking yourself and you, some of y'all have, have asked other people, did I do something such and such? Uh -huh. Because maybe I'm just not seeing something. Amen, somebody. And we all have the same experience. But David is on the run. All he did was try to help the king. All he did was use his hand to play that harp when that evil spirit came upon Saul, who was the king. And all David did was try to love on him and help him. But it didn't matter because even though David was likable, it was a futile exercise for David to be liked by Saul. Can I give you a major point this morning that will really bless you? All right, here it is. I want you to get this. I'm about to go deep. It is not the fact that people who don't know you don't like you. I'm going to dispel a myth. When people do not know you, or if people only have saw you or seen you do good things and help them, it is not that they do not like you. I'm not talking about the people who've done evil to you. I'm talking about the people who treat you as if and behave to you in a way that they don't like you and you hadn't done anything and all you're trying to do is help them. And sometimes you don't even know the person. It is not that they don't like you. Here it is. The reason why people treat you as if they do not like you is because when they see you, you expose an insecurity, a weakness, or a deficiency within them. And when you come around, all you do is expose their weakness. You expose an area where they are lacking. So when they see you and you have not done anything wrong, it's not that they don't like you. It's just that you expose something within them. Am I helping anybody? Does everybody understand it on this morning? So when you expose a weakness and insecurity within a person who does not truly even know you at times, they meant somebody, or really, really, really know you, it's not that they don't like you, it's the fact that you expose something within them that's a weakness or an insecurity. So when they see you and they are insecure about how they look, and they see you and you have an appealing look or a desirable look. It's not that they don't like you. It's because that exposes something within them. Are y'all hearing me on this morning? It, it, sometimes it's not because the person at work uh, done something to you. It's just because when you see that person that's been promoted time and time and time again. Amen, somebody. Then you look at them and you say, well, what am I not doing? 
it's something within us because here's what we do sometimes we see people with, that god elevates and what we do is we say we start hating on them because that person has worked so hard to get where they are and we know that we are not willing to work that hard to get where we want to be so that person exposes a weakness in our own work ethic are y'all hearing me on this morning? So, so some people just don't like you, but it's not that the people don't like you. It's the fact that you expose some deficiencies. Amen, somebody. Some inadequacies, some insecurities uh, within them, and you expose that stuff. And watch this. When you expose that stuff in people, watch this. It hurts within them. It hurts to see you operate. Amen, somebody. It, it, it hurts when they see the spirit of God operating in you it hurts them to see your talent to see the way you look to, to see a, a deep-seated issue that you have and it, it hurts when they see the way you dress amen somebody they're just looking at you funny because you dressed up really nice amen somebody it hurts when they see you worship it hurts when they see God's favor upon you in your life watch this it hurts when they see your house Amen, somebody. It hurts them when they see your car. It hurts them because it brings up some pains within them because they have not risen to a level of success like you have and it exposes their weaknesses. Hope y'all getting this on this morning. And because of their lack of effort, gifts, talents, skills, and abilities, it becomes hurtful. Somebody shout hurtful. It becomes hurtful to face that reality watch this here's a, here's a powerful principle that's pointing it and playing with powerful and pregnant points here it is if you don't work hard to obey god to become the best that you can become you will become a hater of those who do if you don't work hard to obey god and become the best that you can become you will become a hater. Somebody shout hater. Somebody shout hater. One more time. You will become a hater of those who do. Why? Because you envy where they are because of your lack of work ethic that you have within you. So it's not that we don't like people. And, and preachers had the same problem. Listen, I, I've heard preachers say, listen to a sermon. And, and, and instead of bringing about all the great points about the sermon. They talk about the one thing that they didn't agree with. Now this man just preached a magnificent sermon. But the problem is, is that people are competitive. And when people see that you have studied and gained knowledge and wisdom and understanding beyond their level. And they know that they're not willing to do what you did to do that. When they see you, it exposes them. And it's not because they don't like you. They don't like what you expose within them. And because you're nice and you're spiritual all the time and you always have a smile and they don't have the spirit indwelling in them like this. So every time they see you and you're nice and you're smiling and you're spiritual and you're optimistic, they see that in you. Then they, they, you expose that weakness that they have in them because they're not like that. Brian C. Jones, minister of the Grace Street Church of Christ here in beautiful Anderson, South Carolina. We just want to take out this time to thank you for watching. We are broadcasting to 1.4 million homes in upstate South Carolina, Western North Carolina and Northeast Georgia. And we just want to say thank you for getting up every Thursday morning at 6.30 a.m. and supporting our broadcast. Uh, write us to let us know what you think. Write us to let us know that the teaching helped you. Uh, you can reach us at graceviewcoc at gmail.com or you can write us at P.O. Box 722, Anderson, South Carolina, 29622. Also, make sure you like us on Facebook. The information should be on your screen. And just know all of the Passion for Christ episodes are archived on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash Grace View SC. God bless you for tuning in. Let's get back to this message. It's going to bless your life. Thank you so much for watching. So it's not that you don't like them or they don't like you it's because of what you expose somebody shout expose you expose within them because have you ever saw somebody and the sisters y'all y'all smile sisters y'all smile sisters y'all about, about to go there yeah amen, amen. <laughs> mm, look at what she got on all right all right have you ever heard somebody say she thinks she all that 
Now, me, my question to you is, did she tell you that she thought she was all that? Or do you believe she's all that? And now you think that she thinks that she's all that. Now, baby, listen, just because she looks good and she's wearing that dress, applaud her. You can do the same thing, but because you won't work out. Oh, y'all still loving me? And because you won't get in shape like that, you can't wear that dress. Now you're hating. It's not because you don't like her. She exposes a weakness or an insecurity that you have within you. Therefore, you treat her as if you don't like her because of what she exposes in you. I remember playing basketball, Claude, and, 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 and I remember guys that were really, really good who were older than me. And I would see them play, and I'd look at them and say, man, that guy's good. But you want them to kind of mess up. Because, they, because if they mess up, then they push you on the same level as they are. And you don't feel so, so bad about not being where they are. Amen, somebody. Because all of us, all of us got these weaknesses. Somebody shout weaknesses. Somebody shout insecurities. Don't come up and say it one more time. Weaknesses. Everybody got some weaknesses. So it's not that people don't like you. It's sometimes. It's not that you don't like that person because we assign uh, that kind of behavior to people. It's because of what they expose within us. And you want to mess around and, and get somebody to treat you as if they don't like you. You be spiritual. Somebody shall be spiritual. Man, you start quoting some Bible. You start changing your life around, around the very people who you used to turn up with. Amen, somebody. Around the very people that you used to cut up with and say all kind of crazy stuff. And all of a sudden they see you different and you have changed. And they're looking at you like, start treating you differently. Now, why are they treating you differently now as opposed to treat, they didn't treat you no different when you were with them? It's because now that they see you, you expose something with them because they now realize I'm not spiritual. And this person has rolled to the level of being spiritual and it exposes a weakness within me. Now I got to do something to tear him down so I can feel good about myself. Which y'all knew I was preaching this morning. Don't worry about it. It's going to be going to all over the internet in 1.4 million homes. I just want you to be a fly on the wall over here. Amen, somebody. So, so, so we see that when you don't obey God and, and, and when you don't become the best that you can become, you can become a hater. Somebody shout hater. Don't become a hater. You will become a hater when you are jealous of somebody else who has risen to a higher level and it exposes that weakness, that insecurity, that deficiency in you if you don't do something to get better. Amen, somebody. I don't want nobody to come become a hater. Let me tell you what Saul did. Somebody shout Saul. Saul possessed an unwillingness to obey God. I don't, I don't have time. I would have to take you to 20 chapters. I could show you time and time and time again how, how Saul just possessed an unwillingness to obey God. Saul possessed an unwillingness to honor God. And I'm trying to show you some stuff that was in Saul so that you can understand what were the events that caused him to become a hater. I'm trying to help you this morning because I don't want you to be a hater. And I'm trying to walk you through what caused Saul to be one. Hoping that when I show you this, you won't become one and follow in his steps. Number one, he possessed an unwillingness to obey God. Number two, he possessed an unwillingness to honor God. Number three, he possessed an unwillingness to be honest with God. So when you, when you possess an unwillingness to obey God, honor God, and uh, an unwillingness to be honest with God, then when somebody else does all those things, then it's going to expose your weaknesses. So when you see somebody else that obeys God, when you see somebody else that honors God, when you see somebody else that is honest with God and you don't do that, then that's going to expose some stuff within you. Can I, can I tell you when that happened? Uh, let me show you what Saul began to see. I want to show you what Saul began to see. Now, I told you uh, that since he didn't obey God, I don't have time to get into this, but uh, God told him to, that I want you to destroy Amalek and I want you to destroy the Amalekites kill all the men women children infants oxes donkeys 
cattle, all that, killed everybody. Saul came back, destroyed everything with the exception of Agag, the king. Somebody shout the king. And he brought some of the best oxen, the best uh, choices, animals back when God told him to destroy everything. Because God says, I want you to destroy all them sinners. Because if God did not do that, them sinners could rub off on God's people. And some of God's people can be lost. God is so powerful that God, he would destroy somebody else so that you don't get destroyed. Amen. That's all right. And then when you don't destroy what he told you to destroy, he will then punish you. Amen. So he wanted to punish those people. But Saul did not do that. Came back with the king and all some of the best animals. And God had to send Samuel to tell him, you didn't obey the voice of the Lord. God told you to do this, but you brought some back. He wasn't honest with him. He did not honor God. Amen, somebody. And then he did not obey God. So God says, I am going to shift the kingship from you. And I'm going to choose a man that is after my own heart. Amen, somebody. So he shifted from Saul to David. Watch this. Saul kept the kingship but lost the anointing. In other words, he kept the kingship, but he lost the anointing and there was no spirit of God. There are a lot of people in leadership positions, even in the church, that have a role or position, but they have no spirituality. There are a lot of people in leadership that, that, that are leaders in terms of their role, of their function, but they have no real leadership. Oh, I just blessed you. Watch it. There's a difference between real leadership and role leadership. You could be in a leadership position and have that role, but you have no real leadership. Because people don't follow you because they know that something is wrong with you. I don't have time to get into politics this morning. You know where I can go with that. Uh, praise God. Y'all keep smiling this morning. Amen, somebody. Y'all keep smiling. Keep smiling. Keep smiling. All right. So let me tell you what Saul saw. Once the spirit departed from Saul and the spirit remained mightily upon David. Somebody shout David. All right. You're in the house. The Bible teaches us that Saul saw David defeating the giant Goliath. 1 Samuel 17 and verse number 50. Saul saw David was being approved by the people. 1 Samuel 18, 6 through 8. What do you mean approved by the people? Saul's major problem, we'll get to that in just a moment, was Saul wanted the approval of the people instead of having the approval of the God who created the people. Let me say it one more time. I think I need to say it just a little bit slower. I'm getting excited right now, Brother Clement. Saul wanted the approval of the people instead of the approval of the God that created the people. And that is a dangerous thing. First, uh, excuse me, Psalm chapter 118 and verse number eight. It is better to, better to place your trust in God rather than man. Amen, somebody. So Saul saw that David uh, defeated the giant Goliath. Saul saw that David was approved by the people. Saul saw that David, watch this, was a skillful musician. I want you to see what caused the hatred to come about. All right. Saul saw that David was prospering. He was wise. He was intelligent. Saul saw, watch this, that the Lord was with David. It's just some people you see, you like, man, didn't they just get blessed? Hello. Didn't they get blessed again? And again. Amen, somebody. And again. And you're looking at it. What in the world are they doing that I'm not doing? Amen, somebody. <laughs> so I want you to see what Saul saw. He saw David being blessed. And the Lord was just with David. Amen, somebody. And the Lord, and Saul saw, watch this, that the people loved David. He saw that the people loved David. Can I give you something real quick? Uh, I want you to look at 1 Samuel 16. And I want you to look at verse number 20, 21, 1 Samuel 16 and verse number 21. Thank you, Brother Walla. The Bible says, then David came to Saul and attended him. And Saul did what? Loved him greatly. And he became his armor bearer. Y'all see that in the text? Verse number 22. Saul sent to Jesse saying, let David now stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. Here's what I want you to see. Verse number 21, we see that uh, David came to Saul and then Saul said he loved him. Somebody thought he loved him. Yeah. Then in verse number 22, the Bible says, then Saul found, David found favor in Saul's sight. What are you saying, Brother Jones? I'm walking you through this thing. 
David found favor in verse number 22. In verse number 21, we know that Saul, the king, loved David. Now I want you to turn with me to 1 Samuel 18. And I want to look at verses 10 through 12. And I want to walk you through this thing on this morning. Folk will love you today and hate you tomorrow. And I've been living for 39 years. Let me give you a remix. Folk will love you this morning. And hate you this afternoon. Amen, somebody. Yeah, I need to revise that thing. Oh, the Bible says in verse number 10. Thank you, Brother Walla. Now it came about on the next day. What day? I told you earlier what Saul saw. And what Saul saw was that the, the David had the approval of the people. Somebody say that with me. The approval of the people. One more time. The what did David have? He had the approval of the people. Well, how did David get the approval of the people? Because when he came back with a head, with, with, with his hand on some hair and a head that was uh, cut off by the Goliath. Amen, somebody. They belonged to Goliath. David came back in Jerusalem with, it, with a head. He had slain the giant. He slayed the giant. And all the women were dancing and singing. The Saul has, David has killed his 10,000 and Saul has killed his thousands. So when, when, when Saul heard that the women attributed more glory to David instead of him. See, sometimes you got to be happy with what you got. You may not have a Mercedes. Be happy with your Nissan. Amen, somebody. You may not have a 5,000 square foot home, but be thankful for your thousand. Amen, somebody. Square foot home. Amen, somebody. So instead of being appreciative that he was even mentioned by the people, he got mad because he said they're giving David more credit than they're giving me. Now you're in the context. Now let's look at verse number 10. Is it still up there? The Bible says, now it came about, watch this, on the next day. Somebody shout next day. Now I just told you what happened the previous day. All right. That an evil spirit from God came mightily upon Saul, and he raved in the midst of the house while David was playing the harp in his hand. Uh, as usual, you can be serving the very people. You can be serving them. You can be helping the very people like you always do. But all of a sudden, when that person sees something in you that exposes something, a weakness or an insecurity within them, they'll change on you. Somebody say they'll change on you. All right, the Bible says in the D clause of the text, and a spear was in Saul's hand. Spear was in Saul's hand while David is playing for him to try to get the evil spirit up out of him while David is trying to help him. Next verse, Brother Walla, verse number 11. Saul hurled the spear. In case you never saw a track meet before. Y'all know how they, 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 they get that thing and they, they throw it as far as they can. Imagine that coming directly at you while you're helping somebody. So David is just playing the harp. Playing the harp. Soothing his spirit. Soothing his spirit. All of a sudden he got to do like this right here. Because the spirit was coming straight. At him. Amen somebody. Now watch this. I want you to see this. And didn't I just show you that he loved him? Did I just show you that Saul uh, said that he found, David found favor in Saul's sight? Then the Bible says Saul hurled those people. He thought, no, notice what his thinking is. In his mind, he's thinking, I'll pin David to the wall. <laughs> Didn't you just say you loved him? We at the Grace Team Church of Christ want to thank you for listening. If the Passion for Christ television broadcast has blessed your life this morning and you would like to donate, you can go online to www.graceviewcoc.com, click on the donate tab, and you can make your tax deductible donation to this broadcast. God bless you. Tune in next week. Praise God, he is